The Eliza Blue situation is a very fluid situation right now, and it is getting crazier by the minute. Now, we have an article from the Daily Beast about Eliza Blue, and it's saying her own friends aren't buying her trafficking story anymore. Now, this entire article is meant to be a hit piece on Elon Musk, so let's not pretend that the, that the Daily Beast actually cares about this story. They're only using Eliza Blue to attack Elon Musk. But, to be fair... He does see it seems like he does deserve some criticism in this entire situation. And it's not because he was friends with Eliza Blue. It's not because he knows her. It's not because he had interactions with her. It's not because he boosted her profile and helped her gain over a hundred thousand followers on Twitter in just the last few months. None of those things he's responsible for. But when you have people on the platform that he owns getting suspended. And Eliza Blue is the person that seemingly is behind it, and he's not doing anything about it. You have people like The Quartering. You have people like Brittany Venti, people like Yellow Flash, people like Camelot. When you have all of this going on, and there's other people that aren't as prominent as those creators that I just mentioned that were also getting hit by this. When you have all of that going on, and Elon Musk has been so intricately involved in everything going on on Twitter, and now suddenly he's just gone radio silent on this topic, that's where he deserves criticism. Not because he knows Eliza Blue, not because it turned out that she was a, a liar and a manipulator, but what's funny about this is that Eliza Blue was starting to become one of, if not the biggest, anti-Andrew Tate advocates out there. She was all about this that he's the worst person on the planet and all of these horrible things and look maybe andrew tate is but i haven't seen any evidence to support anything other than speculation on the andrew tate situation i haven't known about andrew tate for a long time i only learned about him recently and the more and more i hear people screeching and crying and whining about him and then i just go well what has he done like when he got completely banned from social media what did he do? Because that's when I learned who he was. What did he do to get banned from Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and YouTube? What did he do? And they never said anything. They never gave a reason as to anything he did. So now he's been in a Romanian jail for, uh, I guess, well over a month now. And they won't tell us what he actually did. They'll say, oh, it's for human trafficking. Oh, you mean the same type of human trafficking that Eliza Blue has built her entire career over? A, a meaningless word at this point because of people like her and it's being weaponized. But this is one of his biggest critics and now everything is falling apart on her as it should. And to further that point, I want to show you, this is her appearance on Timcast IRL a few weeks ago. What was the date on this? This was three weeks ago. So three weeks ago is when this happened. Now I watched this episode and Timcast chat is always brutal, but they were extra brutal with her and deservedly so because she's a liar. She's a manipulator. She's a piece of trash. Listen to the language, but I'm going to let you guys lead up. They were talking about Andrew Tate at this point in time. Listen to the language that she's using when talking about this situation. And Luke and Tim, to their point, are, are questioning her. So here we go. And, and obviously this guy's a financial related thing, but these people in the club, they get away with everything. So it very well may be that Andrew Tate did bad stuff, mm -hmm. but he ain't in the club. And he's been speaking out against the club, so he's not protected. Yeah. Yeah. As we know, for many decades now, the, the federal government has been aiding and protecting some of the worst, atrocious, horrible mm -hmm. behaviors. Um, they've been working with big tech social media that also has been aiding and abetting it to the mm -hmm. point where there's even victims coming forward and saying, hey, there's these photos, there's these videos of me being an underage child being hurt and abused here. Twitter looking at that, listening to the victim, still deciding, you know what, this doesn't violate our terms and policies. This is what happened here in the United States. Your tax dollars as an American went to aiding and protecting an international trafficking operation. We're off, off of the coast in the Virgin Islands in the United States. They literally had an island that they flew in powerful people and they procured small children to them. So obviously this is a very important issue here. This is an issue that we can't forget. This is an issue that we need to, to fight for since everything that usually happens in our mainline political system is protecting these individuals and very rarely do we get any justice here. Now, uh, when, when it comes to this particular case, I, I know you don't feel comfortable talking about some of the accusations or some yeah. of the evidence here. So I'm just, I'm, I'm just trying- Listen to already, yeah. 
yeah, she doesn't feel comfortable talking about it because she's a liar. I'm trying to, to frame some questions so we get a kind of bigger understanding here. Yeah. Um, if I could ask, um, did, did, did you know these victims beforehand? Did they come to the law firm? Can you tell us a little? So the backstory here is that she has apparently, allegedly, she has met with Andrew Tate's victims and she calls them survivors. She calls them survivors. So that's what Luke is trying to ask her about right a now. A bit about your background with them and did you talk to them and from like zero to a hundred, how much do you trust them? Um, so it's, I don't want to give away, to, it's, it's really hard for me right now, Luke. This is a little different than the, than the John Doe 1, John Doe 2 Twitter lawsuit. I mean, once things are filed, then I have green light to go. Right now I'm in limbo as a survivor advocate. I've been serving one of the survivors since summer, since, since this past summer. So I've been serving this individual on a frequent basis as their survivor advocate, giving direct service. Um, anyone that knows what a victim's advocate is or is a survivor advocate. So I've been working with this individual for quite some time. Um, the other survivor is more recent. Uh, the, um, that's all I'm gonna say about that right now. Just to not, I don't wanna um, break any of their, it's, I have to be very mindful of what I say because I don't wanna give away any of their. Pathetic, pathetic, but it gets better. Their identities. But from your experience, you 100% believe them? Um, I believe every survivor that I serve. I believe every survivor that I serve. Now, I, I want to show you the Tim Cash chat because it they just go, <laughs> hang on just a minute. They go wild right here. Over, over that comment, they go wild. And it is so funny. But I also do my part in explaining due diligence. I'm mean, sorry, explaining, do, I do my due yeah. diligence and, expl and explaining due process. Yeah, because some people are going to, you know, take that question and, and are saying, well, if you believe everyone, how do we know if someone's not, you know, using this situation sure. for their own personal so, benefit? And I could see that. And I could see that. Um, well, number one, they don't get any money from me. And they don't get, I mean, as you can see, they're not even coming out their full name yet. By the way, they will. They These two survivors probably will. We just need to make sure that they're safe. Um, you have to understand, we're, we're, we didn't necessarily know that the Romanian law enforcement was going to move ahead with what they did right then. So um, so it's it's putting the other survivors that have been building their case globally for a while, we're all in like hyper mode, um, trying to not catch up, but sort of catch up. And, and why, I want to kind of, sorry, go ahead. Keep why, do you, why do you call them survivors? Why is that the terminology? Because uh, I'm a survivor advocate. No, but, but like, what does survivor mean? Are, like, is there survivor is there, of abuse or trauma? Does that mean that there's a high propensity, like the end result of the trauma it, or abuse is to kill them? That's a really good point, Tim. Um, I believe that any time someone faces trauma in this way, uh, sexual assault, domestic violence, human trafficking, uh, that there is a high potential, especially in children, of their life to end right then and there. You never know how violent it's going to get. Um, and that's it's funny i think sometimes people think i'm like kind of a nut job because i'm so grateful to be alive all the time oh i don't think they God. understand what i've fully been through if you anyway what have you been through eliza can you tell us what have you been through why don't you go ahead and tell us what you've been through who did it to you names and dates specific locations everything because you don't want to because you've made it all up because you are a lying piece of trash um, now, uh, Yellow Flash tweeted this out. Why are right wing media outlets co uh, why uh, why are right wing media outlets covering up for Eliza Blue? And I said because they're all as bad as left wing outlets. Um, there's Data Racer because they platformed her. It's a hit to their credibility and causes. And a again, uh, while I'm a obviously I'm a big time Trump guy, uh, I'm not a fan of of right wing or conservative per se. Um, I I'm I'm a fan of Trump. And so, um, but typically I spend more of my time talking about the left and how they manipulate everything because it's, inter it's, it's affected the entertainment. But when you look at situations like your Jack Murphy's and now your Eliza Blues and others, the right just will not, they will not hold their own accountable. They just won't do it. And uh, now we got this tweet right here. Elon Musk unfollowed uh, Eliza Blue, quartering you turned... Uh, her into a whole pack bro so i don't know if this is true because i don't i you know again maybe i'm wrong i haven't seen any evidence that says that he was ever following her to begin with 
Obviously, he was connected to her and linked to her because they had had a ton of interactions on Twitter. But I, I don't know if there's any evidence that he was actually following her to say that he has unfollowed her. But I guess we're just going to continue to see how that all plays out. But back to the article of uh, the Daily Beast, uh, Eliza Blue's own friends aren't buying her trafficking story. Uh, Elon Musk's favorite anti-trafficking advocate has set off a war in right-wing circles after Twitter banned some of her critics and her own friends are poking holes in her story. And it's true. It's a hundred percent true. She's she's not she is not a good person. She's being exposed, and uh, I'm not going to go through this whole article because I mean this was more so about you know Andrew Tate's one of Andrew Tate's biggest critics, and there's a lot of them out there. And um, you know I, I'm just I can't believe the amount of people that are just blindly believing that he's guilty of something. And I just continue to ask myself, where's the evidence? Just like I ask myself, where's what did he get banned from all the social media for? And they never gave a reason why. And so until I see evidence, I'm not going to believe any fucking thing that these people say. Nothing. And uh, I know it's easy to jump on the, the uh, anti, anti-Andrew anti Tate bandwagon right now, and that's perfectly fine. But it seems like people have such a vested interest that they they want they want there to be victims of Andrew Tate. They want people in the world to have been victimized by him rather than him just being thrown under the bus by the media. They would rather have real victims because of their hatred for Andrew, Andrew Tate and the fact that they just need him to be guilty. It's a really weird dynamic. But we're going to continue to follow this. It's really funny that it's all playing out. Those that preach the loudest have the most to hide. I've said that over and over again, and I will continue to say it. Uh, Eliza Blue is uh, not a good person. She's being completely exposed, and there's a ton of cowards that do not want to talk about this, and you have to ask yourself why. Have a great day, and we will talk to you later.